Hey guys, welcome to my video on metabolic alkalosis. I'm going to start out by reminding you to please subscribe and turn the notifications on. So whenever you start an acid-base problem, you should always remember to check the anion gap first. So the anion gap, recall, is the concentration of the sodium ions minus a combination of the concentrations of bicarb and chloride ions. An anion gap above 12 indicates that it's elevated, and what that tells you is that there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis regardless of what the other lab values like the pH suggest. So if there is a, a high anion gap metabolic acidosis, you're going to proceed with the steps for that that I've described in part one of the series, and the link is below in the about section. So now on to metabolic alkalosis. So you have a problem, you've calculated the anion gap, it is normal, and now you're going to look for the conspicuous disorder. So the conspicuous, if the conspicuous disorder is metabolic alkalosis, that means that you've pinpointed that the pH is above 7.4 and the bicarb is above 24. So once you've done that, you have to analyze the pressure of carbon dioxide. So you're going to create a range of expected. So you do that by taking the bicarb, multiplying it by 0.7 and adding 20. Then you're going to take that number that you get and add five to it and subtract five to it to get a range. So you've got your range for expected pressure of carbon dioxide. So the, if the actual is less than the range, there is an additional respiratory alkalosis. If the actual is more than the range, there is an additional respiratory acidosis. Chloride in the urine becomes very important when we talk about explaining the causes of metabolic alkalosis. So if you look at the urine chloride, if it's low, like less than 20, the explanation of what is causing it could be diuretic use, vomiting, diarrhea, cystic fibrosis. If the urine chloride is high, meaning above 20 milliequivalents, you could look at the patient's blood pressure. So the blood pressure of the patient, if they're normotensive, that means that possibly Barter's or Gittleman syndrome could be causing the metabolic alkalosis. If the blood pressure is elevated, uh, a very prominent cause could be hyperaldosteronism. And the way that I remember that you can look at the urine chloride to figure out why there is a metabolic alkalosis is I spell metabolic alkalosis with the CL in it. Um, and that helps me remember to add, that I can do this analysis with the urine chloride. So here's an example where I've again underlined the fact that we're using 24 for the normal bicarbonate and 40 for the normal pressure of carbon dioxide. So for this case, I give them the blood pressure, the pH, the electrolytes, the bicarb concentration, the urine pH, the urine chloride, and the pressure of carbon dioxide. So again, we have an acid-base problem, and the first thing we're going to do is check the anion gap, and it's normal. So there cannot be a high anion gap metabolic acidosis present, and also there cannot be a triple acid-base disorder because there is no high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Right off the bat, the conspicuous disorder is a metabolic alkalosis. The pH is above 7.4, and the bicarb is above 24. So now we have to look at the carbon dioxide. So you create a range of normal from the bicarb, and you add 5, and you subtract 5. So the actual carbon dioxide from the data above does fall into this range because it's 36 and it falls in the range. So there is no second disorder. This is just a metabolic alkalosis and compensation explains the carbon dioxide fully. 
As for possible causes, notice that the urine chloride is elevated. And also the patient is normal tensive, so some possibilities may be Barter syndrome or Gittleman syndrome. So I just want to thank you for watching my video and I just want to remind you to please subscribe and more videos coming soon.